Brooke Baldwin, and I have to tell you, I am sickened today. I am sickened to hear about the killing of three young people at my alma mater, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Uh, one father showed up at the crime scene. We don't yet know his name, but you can see the desperation. Tell me how my son is. What's his situation? If he's dead, tell me he's dead. If he's alive, tell me he's alive. Well, just tell me straight up. Well, now we know what happened, and these are three names I, I need you to remember. They are 23-year-old Dia Barakat, his wife, 21-year-old Yusor Mohammed, and her sister, 19-year-old Rezin Mohammed Abu Salah. They were reportedly shot in the head. Senseless. They are all Muslim. Police say it is not clear, though, if at this point that is why they were attacked. They're investigating. But the father of these two women said this to the News and Observer, and I want to quote him exactly. He said, this was not a dispute over a parking space. This was a hate crime. This man had picked on my daughter and her husband a couple of times before, and he talked with them with his gun in his belt, and they were uncomfortable with him, but they did not know he would go this far. Here is what we do know. Their futures were incredibly bright. Rezin was a student at North Carolina State. Her sister was just going to begin dental school at UNC. And her husband, Dia, already studying dentistry there, had plans for the summer. Not a vacation, but a mission for Syrian refugees. Have you ever felt helpless about the situation in Syria and felt like you can't do anything about it? Well, this is your opportunity to help. This summer, I'm embarking on a trip to Turkey with 10 dentists to help Syrian refugee students in need of urgent dental care. Joining me now, Shafi Khan, one of the founders of United Muslim Relief and a friend of the victims. Shafi, thank you so much for coming on with me, and I am so sorry for your loss. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you for inviting me. You knew all three of them through your organization. Uh, I want to get to their work in just a minute, but first, Shafi, just can you talk to me about their character? Um, you know, we, we live in a, a time of um, uh, intense individualism and um, consumerism, and these three served as shining examples to youth all over the world of uh, uh, the hearts that they have, the importance of serving others. They live for something greater than, greater than themselves. Um, I met Dia many years ago, um, him and his wife, Yosser, helped launch the United Muslim Relief Triangle chapter. Um, the younger sister, Razan, was uh, a current officer in our chapter at the UMR Triangle chapter in, in Raleigh Chapel Hill and Durham, and her job was uh, monthly feedings for the homeless, and she would set up um, feedings where our students and young volunteers would go out every month and serve the people of, of Raleigh, and that should tell you um, everything you need to know about the characters of these people. These were the best of the best. These are the kind of people, uh, characters, the, uh, the kind of children that every parent dreams for. And um, it's, a, it's a tragic, tragic loss for the community. I'm so glad you pointed out the monthly homeless feedings. I've seen pictures on the internet. I mean, it's not just that Dia was going to go to Turkey this summer, but this is something they did daily, weekly, monthly. Um, can, can you talk to me a little bit more about Dia's trip, though, to, to, to Turkey this summer? I mean, why was this so important to him? You know, Dia uh, was following in his brother's footsteps also. His brother Fadis um, served with us and served Syrian refugees in Turkey before. Um, this is a family that, uh, that has inspired uh, many people in the community. Um, um, it's not just, it wasn't just Dia, it was um, the brother and the sister. And what Dia was doing was getting together, uh, help to get uh, dental, uh, meet the dental needs of Syrian refugees. And this is something that no one um, really discusses or talks about. Um, it's really, really hard to inspire people to um, get them involved for something like dental relief, but it's something that's so important that we don't realize. And he picked up something that was so tough and, uh, and went after it and did a great job. And, if, if you, and I, I really hope this mission continues and it will be fulfilled. And we're going to do our best to help hopefully support them and make sure that uh, this is recorded on his good deeds. Mm -hmm. The, I read a quote a moment ago from the Raleigh News and Observer from the, the two women's father saying that he feels absolutely that the three of them were attacked because of their religion, because of their culture. And when you look at the suspect's Facebook page, and I'm not wasting anyone's time reading any of it, 
um, but it's clearly very anti-religion. I'll just leave it there. I was looking at Dia's uh, Twitter feed, and in and, and one of the tweets I just wanted to share, it's since been retweeted a lot, many, many times, he said he rewrote uh, last month, it's so freaking sad to hear people say we should kill Jews or kill Palestinians as if that's going to solve anything shaking my head. Um, how aware was he uh, of just this sort of sense of maybe feeling discriminated against because of being Muslim um, in, in the North Carolina area or, or in general? Did he ever express any, any fears like that to you? Well, you know, I'm a North Carolinian too. I grew up in uh, North Carolina and it's a beautiful state with beautiful people, but um, our organization, United Muslim Relief, we're a non-political humanitarian organization, but speaking as, as, an, as an American Muslim, I can tell you we cannot deny that there's a sentiment in the community that we feel that we've been, we're being targeted for our faith. There is certain sections of the media and political apparatus that um, are constantly dehumanizing Muslims. And, you know, I want to take this minute and I want to ask people like Fox News and Bobby Jindal to stop this dehumanization of Muslims. It's really, really starting to take a toll. We had just last month a, a, a elected official named John Bennett, who is a state senator, said that Islam is a cancer that needs to be cut out of society. And the Republican Party establishment, instead of condemning him, they came out and made a point to say that we stand by him. These people need to reflect sincerely about what they're doing to the social cohesion of this country. Imagine if someone had said that about the Jewish community. And the important point here is that black lives matter, white lives matter, Muslim lives matter, all lives matter. And we have to start putting this point across to the community. I don't want to make a blanket statement about Republicans, Democrats, who you said you were coming from a non-political perspective, but I understand your frustration. And it sounds like perhaps some of these young, uh, young people did as well. Shafi Khan, thank you. You're welcome. Just ahead, the movie.